Ring is by far one of my favorite horror movies of all time, and hell, even horror franchises of all time. It was the film that turned Japanese horror, J-horror, into a hot international export in the early 2000s, and the series has been continuing through sequels and remakes to this very day. The newest sequel, simply titled Sarako, released in Japan last month, and it definitely had my curiosity up since the director was Hideo Nakata, the original director of Ring. So when James, a friend of the channel, asked if he could review it for an episode, I was not going to turn him down. James currently lives in Japan, the lucky SOB, teaching English. He loves Godzilla, he loves horror movies, and he's a really, really cool dude. Please sit back and enjoy this retrospective and review of Sarako, the newest terrifying chapter in the Ring Saga. I mean, this film is pretty significant because of the fact that uh, Hideo Nakata, or Nakata, is coming back, right, to the director's chair? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's in first film since Ring 2. As a Ring fan, like, before you jump into this, would you mind kind of, like, maybe going down movie by movie? There's some really good ones, and then it gets into, like, oh, maybe not so good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, well, actually, I'll start from the books, because I've read all the books. Well, I've read four or five books. Yeah. The books are so different to the movies. I think the books are kind of interesting to talk about as well. The first Ring book is called Ring. Interesting novel. I've not read many novels like it. The actual movie Ring, or The Ring, whichever one you've seen, American or Japanese, very different to the book. Very, very different. And there's lots of TV adaptations of The Ring, which I've seen as well. But the first Ring book is really good and the first Ring movie is very good as well. And then this is kind of like where things kind of split off because they'd made a movie called Razen, which is Spiral. The book Spiral got turned into Razen. That didn't do very well. He actually directed that one as well, but because it was so different to the first movie, Ring, they made the second Ring movie in Japan to kind of match up with the tone of the first film. Ring 2 is, for the Japanese version, is my favorite Ring movie. Oh, really? Yeah. Because you know in the first Ring movie, they kind of say like, oh yeah, he's psychic. They've got all like these psychic abilities, but it's only like Sadako or uh, what's the name in... Uh, yeah, Samara. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Samara, Samara. Uh, she, like, they, it's her that's psychic sort of thing. But in the second film, they deal with like the supernatural and psychic elements a lot more. So like, um, I just love it because they build in more of the mythology and um, in the end, they basically, uh, it's like an insane ending. There's like portals through swimming pools into the nether realm. And it's like, it's insane. I love it. I love it. It's just, it goes back to it. And it's really dark as well. It's like really creepy. And the curse moves on to different people. And like, it, it's really interesting. A really interesting movie. I really enjoy it. And then you get to the third movie, which is based off of a short collection of stories called A Bus Day or Birthday. And Japanese like birthday sort of thing, and it's called Ring Zero Birthday. That's very similar to the novel, and um, it deals with Sadako when she was with the theatre troupe, like when she disappeared, and that's quite interesting. I like that movie, but it feels more like a drama. It feels more like a Japanese drama, and at the end, then the girl, then Sadako gets kind of possessed by her evil twin type thing, and then she's off. So it kind of like possessing people and killing people and that's how the curse came to be and you see it get chucked down the well that's the end of that sort of thing it's set it's the prequel movie to everything and then after that the next two movies are the sadako 3d movies uh sadako 3d is based off of the novel s by koji suzuki which is like the fourth one in the series third one in the canon there's there's another no novel called loop Loop means nothing to the series in terms of the movies because Loop is just batshit insane. It's about virtual reality. Sadako's possessing people, she's cursing people, and she brings a child back to life. Very weird book. Quite interesting though, but just a bit of a weird read. So it has nothing to do with anything involving the Ring series beyond here. <laughs> <laughs> So they adapted the novel S. Actually, just last year it got um, released in English for the first time. It's just been translated. Did it really? It was so like, I bought it. I had it on like sale. Like I bought it pre-order because I was like, oh my God, yes, yes. Another one of these novels. Uh, it was 
boring as shit. <laughs> <laughs> so is Sadical 3D, because it, Sadical 3D is based off S, and it turns out that Sadical 3D and S are a build-up to the last novel and the last film adapt- adaptation, which I actually have. I have with me in Japanese right now. I'm studying it to like practice. So yeah, I'm actually translating it myself. <laughs> oh, that's so, that's so cool. Yeah, I've actually, I've even got the first ring book as well, like um, the original in Japanese too. So I'm translating that for a bit of a giggle and to practice some Japanese. But you know, so yeah, um, Sadako 3D2 much better than the first one because there's more stuff going on. I can't say anything about Tide. I've only translated about two or three lines from the book, and it's a pretty hefty book. And I don't have the time or the patience <laughs> to translate complex kanji and all this sort of stuff. So yeah, but I think Santa Claus 3D. It's like two movies, and I think the second one's obviously better than the first. The first one's just boring, and nothing really happens, much like in the book. So yeah. What about Santa Claus versus Kayako? I enjoyed it, but I think my enjoyment was I watched it on a special. Uh, <clears throat> I, I acquired it through special means, shall we say? <laughs> I won't get too into the technical abilities. There, I watched it. I had a great time with it, and it was made even better because when they go see the、um, the Shinto priest at、uh, the temple to try and uncurse her friend, all of the chants that she was doing, the the person who'd done the dub, or like sorry, the subtitles at the bottom. Uh, translated them as Harry Potter spells. Oh my god! <laughs> so like he got this moment to do like <laughs> Shinto chants and stuff, and it's just like Expelliarmus. <laughs> so,、uh, well, like, it just made the movie more entertaining. Like the、um, the actual subtitles were like really bad, and the movie was fun. I I didn't take it too seriously. I really did not take it too seriously. It's too much fun.、Um, I've watched other adaptations. Like there's the Korean version, The Ring Virus. Um, that was very good. That was very close to the book. If you watch the first Ring and go, that was good, and you want to get into the Ring series of books, you can always check out the Ring Virus. It's the Korean version. It's very close to the book. And if you like the Ring Virus, you're going to like the book.、Um, but and、uh, yeah, so that was very good. The Korean version is very good. All this Ring stuff, and then here comes Sadako, which you got to see. Yes. Yes, I saw it, and it was all in Japanese as well. So it was a true, it was a true test of my abilities. But I understood everything they said. Really? And、um, yeah, I understood everything they were talking about because they kind of repeat the same stuff over and over again. <laughs> I'm gonna build it up, though, Matt. I'm gonna build it up.、Uh, I'll start with the good. Okay. And then I'll kind of start sliding into the oh、uh, no stuff. <laughs> so actually, no, I'll start with the story. Because the story is very different to anything happening really in the Ring series. So first of all, no videotape. Interesting. No well, no videotape or well. The film starts off in Sadako's hometown on the island, and it's her grave. And one night there's a storm, and during the storm, a stone is removed from the、uh, grave site. Like it's like、like、she's bricked into a cave system. And the stones fall out, and her spirit is released into the world. So this little girl at the beginning of the movie, and she's she might be like one of the Sadako、um, clones, or one of the Sadako kind of like copies from the earlier movies. Like she's been cursed before. So this little girl,、uh, I've forgotten her name. All I know is she looked exactly like one of my students that I teach, so it was really surreal. <laughs> kind of watch, like watching this little girl. It's like, hang on a minute, hang on, that looks really creepy. Weird. Like, it's just scary, like this girl that I teach. And、um, her mum is basically tr- abusing her. Like it's kind of like a carry situation where she's locked in a cupboard, and the mum's kind of like insane. And the film begins with the mum trying to burn down the house with the little girl in it. Because she's like, you're Sadako, you're Sadako, aren't you? Sort of thing.、Uh, of course, Sadako's spirit is released, and she takes the girl away as the house burns down. And the girl kind of ends up wandering around, and she is alone. She starts、uh, doing a bit of a,、uh, and it turns into a bit of sixth sense for a little while, and she starts seeing dead people. Okay. So, because she's possessed by Sadako and she's been cursed, she's got like she's essentially like a conduit. Between Sadako and the real world, right. So she's like walking along overpass, and she sees this woman, and she goes, "Hey, are you okay?" The wo- 
that it was really bad. I kind of laughed at this. But I shouldn't have laughed. The girl just like the woman jumps up on top of the overpass and just jumps off <laughs> and she just crashes like out of nowhere. She's just like, hey, are you OK? And next thing you know, she just like suddenly yeets herself off this fucking overpass. And I'm just like, wait, what? <laughs> and it turns out, yeah, she, there's like a grave memorial there. She committed suicide and she's seeing the ghost of what happened sort of thing. Gotcha. And then the police policeman takes her to the hospital. That's where we're introduced to our main character, Akigawa. Akikawa, Akigawa. I couldn't catch the whether it was a K or a G, but she's a doctor at a hospital, and she works with children and mental patients. Kind of similar to you know in um, Ring Two. Yes. When um, the girl has a mental breakdown and she's going to the hospital, sort of thing. Yeah. Kind of, it's a similar similar area like that. It, it's pretty much the same as that sort of situation going on. So this little girl, of course, she's getting bullied by all the kids because she's weird and she's singing like old songs from the fifties because she's possessed by a girl from like that era. Right. And she's obviously starting to telekinetic powers and like you know, all the kids don't like her. The, uh, all of the nurses are kind of like I don't like her but this one doctor she's showing kindness and love to this little girl trying to find out what happened to her mother um, and why she was lost and why she doesn't remember anything then we split off into two lines because the n- doctor's uh, sorry I'll say Akigawa's brother younger brother is a YouTuber they call it streaming video streaming video that's it yeah <laughs> And he's basically an obnoxious, like, YouTuber that does humiliating stuff, and that's their point of conflict. He's a layabout that has, like, this YouTube manager, and he's bored of making these, like, embarrassing videos where he's got to make a fool of himself all the time, and she's embarrassed by him because it's like, my younger brother's acting like a twat, basically, for (laughs) views. Um, So there's a point of contention there. So he decides to go one up, and he ends up going to the apartment building where the where the mum tried to kill her daughter and it's been cursed by Sadako. Uh, on his video, he captures an image of Sadako and it starts cursing people from there, sort of. Th- well, it's, sorry, no, it curses two people from there. The, the, uh, were the, the nurse, Akigawa, or oh, sorry, the doctor, Akigawa, him, so the brother, and someone else it curses as well. I've forgotten who. Not many people get like taken away in this movie. It's not like um, it's not like the older movies where it's constantly rolling over. It's very self-contained. Really, this one. There's only a few people that get like cursed by Sadako. But there is an interesting twist in it that does relate it back to the first movie. So there's this woman. She's a bit strange. She always gives flowers to um, uh, Akigawa. And, you know, like, uh, it's borderline is stalkerish sort of thing. Yeah. And it's starting to get weird. Turns out the crazy older woman is the friend of the first victim in the Ring movie. In the first Ring movie. Really? She's the one that, yeah, she's the one that finds her friend, and that's why she's a bit messed up. Um, and she gets cursed by Sadako and eventually taken to the nether realm sort of thing like that's the thing about this movie there's lots of interesting plot points but as i talk about it a little bit more you'll kind of see it's not it doesn't go where you think it's going to go or it goes where we've been before gotcha people start disappearing or 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 not even disappearing that they get found like in the scary face pose with the screechy violins and the flashing sort of thing the brother gets actually like taken away by um sadako to her grave so it becomes it's like in the first movie it was a race against time to save the son yeah in this movie it's a race against time to save her brother from being cursed but it turns out it's all a trap she just wants the little girl's soul sadako wants the little girl's soul um they save the little girl's soul she becomes unpossessed however they need to sacrifice their own lives her the brother and the sister need to sacrifice their own lives to kind of um uh make sure that she's safe uh so there's like this pool like she's having weird dreams like they're having weird visions there's like this pool in sadako's cave where she comes out of that's essentially like her well for the movie. And yeah, there's lots of spirits and like angry voices and stuff. And it's really interesting imagery sort of thing. Like there's lots of really nice shots in this movie that are really effective. There's a bit where Ak- uh, Akigawa goes to the uh, lift 
to as she's leaving work, and the shot looks almost right out of um, The Exorcist. Really? You know when he looks up to when he you knows looking up at the window. It's like that, but with an elevator, like um, light show sort of thing, like counting down to the where you are. And it was a really interesting shot. And there's things like the beginning shots on the island on Sadako's home island, where like it's like early evening and everything's like bloomed out with like this beautiful orange colour and the rocks and like the waves. It's really some really nice imagery in here, and some really nice um, colouring and like you know. Um, quite effective kind of like lighting Mm -hmm. and like I said the music as well the music is somewhere between The Exorcist The Fog and the first movie really you've got your violins you've got your screechy violins whenever Sadako's doing something creepy and weird like you know it's really that's nice to hear the Exorcist stuff comes through there's kind of like some rhythmic sort of like um, pulses that go through there on piano or keyboard or synthesizer that sound very similar to um, uh, tubular bells kind of like very like this is what I mean. There's lots of Western influence in this movie as well, like some Carrie ripoff stuff and some not ripoff like in homage and like style stuff. There's some Sixth Sense style stuff going on in here. I guess you could say something like Insidious with the way Sadako works. She's like taking children away, sort of thing. Yeah, like where she's trying. To, it's kind of got that Western influence, similar to the original book series. Like it's got a bit of Western Hollywood style and. Uh, Stephen King style stuff going on in there, and the and the fog as well. Have you ever seen the fog, John Carpenter's? Yeah, fog. I saw the original. Never saw the new one. You don't have to. It's shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, the original the original movie is really good, and you know it's got those piano motifs, like you know at the beginning when the sailor's telling his story to the kids at the beach by the fire. Yeah, that really nice. I love I love. It's a really beautiful haunting like piano piece. It's kind of got something similar to that at the beginning, like some of the motifs for the piano are very similar to the fog. So that was really good, but just everything around it, we've done it before, like trying to rescue the brother it pans out the exact same way as trying to rescue the son in the first movie they go to the island they try and convince people to let them put Sadako to rest and what's going on where is she where's my brother and it's just more of the same and it relies too much on the motifs of the past so you know I said the um, woman from the first movie gets taken away like well killed when she gets cursed Literally, the TV crawl thing happens. Sadako crawls out of a TV to do it. I want to say it's cool, but it looked really bad. Like, it did not. It, it, they put CGI blur over Sadako and she's crawling like a fucking lizard along the floor. And I'm like watching it. And I'm like, this is nothing like what she did in the first. Like, because you know, like how in the original she crawls out and it's like her body's like contorting and then she slowly stands up and she walks towards and the eye. None of that. It was like a quick fire. She like basically she does the slink out of the TV thing really well, and then all of a sudden she's like CGI'd crawling towards her like a lizard sort of thing, and her oh, eyes right Lord. up to her face, and it just it just looked really like it was like this is all tension has been drained from the scene. Any sort of feeling of fear that I had, or any kind of like oh yeah, it's gonna be really creepy, it's gonna be really really creepy, is gone now. The same with the YouTube video. I'm just gonna call it YouTube. I'm not calling it a streaming video. That's fucking stupid. I'm gonna call it YouTube. He's basically YouTube. The YouTube video in between the first person camera shot of the guy like breaking into the apartment, we see shots of his sister, like input shots of his sister, and it's like panning around her. And I'm like, why are we seeing her reaction? We've got a guy here who's literally about to break into a haunted apartment building. Like, that could build up so much tension, a first person camera setting. But they keep cutting keep cutting away to the sister to show a reaction. And I'm like, we don't need to see that. You're breaking the tension. You know, you've broken tension now because you're cutting back to this panic. And it goes on for a while, Matt. Like, that's the thing that annoyed me was like, it wasn't like a little insert shot of a reaction. There's one shot where you can hear the video playing and it's probably hanging on her for about five, six seconds. Oh and it's gosh. just panning around her. And you can hear him walking around the apartment. And I'm like, I want to see that because you could be building up so much tension. He's got like a little, um, all he's got is like a little camera. That's all he's got. How, many, how much tension could you build up from that? The, the lighting's really creepy, it's dark, it's misty, like in like got ash everywhere. Like, you know, all the stuff in their, in their apartments all burnt up. And like, the acting's actually not bad in the scene, but it just cuts away. I'm just like, why? Why? <laughs> like, you know. 
And like I say, just it just becomes really generic by the end. They're doing exactly what they did in the first movie, and I was just sat there like, come on, do something new, do something interesting, like challenge my perception of what Ring is, sort of thing. But it didn't. It just it played it fairly safe, and some really nice ideas kind of got thrown away. Like I was thinking. When the minute they mention YouTube video, I was thinking, great, worldwide curse. You know, Sadako's going to be everywhere. Sadako's going to be, like, yeeting people into the nether realm across, like, the whole entire world because it's on YouTube. Like, you know, it's a viral video. It's the ring virus literal. Nah, just about four or five people get taken away or killed. And it was just, like, the same beats over and over again. And even the new stuff, it's been touched on before. Like Ring 2, the schoolgirl from the interview um, becomes the new, essentially becomes the new Sadako, doesn't she? She's been, it, she's been interviewed and then there's that really creepy shot where like they go, did you know about Sadako? And she looks up and she shakes her head no. And at the very end, like as she's becoming possessed, it starts like warping out sort of thing and like she crawls out the TV. It's really creepy. Like I guess they're trying to do a similar thing with the little girl here, like in terms of her being possessed. But it just feels like, it just feels like Carrie. It just feels like Carrie, you know. Um, yeah, so overall, um, <clears throat> yeah, I would give the movie a 6 out of 10. Like, who who's the audience for this movie? Is it, like, a younger crowd? Is it the, you know, trying to get the people back from 1998, you know, who saw the original Ring? It's got the callbacks to the original Ring, but I think that all the callbacks that everyone's going to know, the TV crawling, the whole... Yeah, you know, that sort of stuff. It's iconography over legitimate kind of uh, yeah, it's like iconography and um, putting your stamp on it rather than I feel like genuine kind of like tying it in. So like it was a younger crowd. Like I went there on my own. Uh, I was obviously the only foreign person there. <laughs> so <laughs> people were kind of looking at me like, what is this guy doing here? <laughs> like, like, you walked to the wrong movie? Is he okay? <laughs> but yeah, um, like it was young couples, groups of girls out like together to watch a scary movie. Uh, like a couple younger guys were there, like high school kids sort of thing. So yeah, it's a lot more of like a pg-13 teen horror movie sort of thing like the equivalent in japan over like this is gonna be like culture breaking kind of like all boundaries are gone now so it was basically like it it was like the japanese equivalent of like a insidious movie an annabelle movie kind of like just put out to try and shock audiences but playing over the same beats we've hit over and over again in other movies do you feel that Nakata brought anything new to the table? I mean, I know you just kind of said that it was the same beats, but was his inclusion, do you think, just for the name brand? Or does he, like, you know, infuse his style into this movie, in your opinion? It's definitely got his style. It's definitely got his kind of, I'd call it, like, clinical kind of style. You know, like, how he let shots linger and, like, you know, like, it that he does that very well here. He even... It's like he even recreates some shots from the first few movies. Like um, he did, like when they're on the boat going to the island. You know that shot with the um, with the water flowing by. Yeah, he recreates that as well. And like little motifs, like to remind you of the first movie. To say he did anything new, um, apart from the cursed girl aspect and kind of like the whole Sixth Sense style stuff. Um, which I felt the Sixth Sense style stuff that he was doing felt a lot more like The Grudge. You know, like in The Grudge, when they're cursed, they kind of see other people. That felt more like The Grudge than it did The Ring, which is very weird. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, that, that's that's fine. I love both I love both series. Well, most of the series, I should say. I like, you know, and like, kind of, I like the kind of stuff around it. But yeah, yeah, it kind of felt like he was still even the new stuff to the ring has been done in other Japanese horror movies or things like um, Pulse, like Cairo Pulse. Yeah, yeah. Where like the internet's cursed and stuff and it makes people depressed. It's kind of that whole like people falling into psychosis when they're cursed by Sadako as well. So yeah, it was nothing. Even the new stuff was taken from other elements of uh, Japanese horror. So I couldn't even say that it was like original sort of thing. To, it was original to the ring franchise, but not to the kind of horror franchise as a whole. Right. 
it's kind of disappointing. I know, I felt really bad because I was like, oh yeah, yeah, no, we'll talk about it. It'll be really good. And I saw the movie and I was like, oh shit, it wasn't very good. Uh, what, do I, what do I do? Do I, do I tell him it was shit and we don't bother or like what? <laughs> <laughs> do you buy into the notion that sequelizing Ring the first movie or or like that is an extremely difficult task. I, I, I don't feel like anything after Ring, personally, just my opinion, just my opinion, because yeah. I know you like Ring too. I don't feel like anything quite hits the strong notes of the first movie, you know? Ring 2 hmm. did go interesting, and I think it's better than uh, Rosin, uh, yes. Spiral, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what, in your opinion, like, where does this stack, you know, in the series and... And again, is it hard to sequelize a movie like Ring? Well, the thing is, because obviously I know about the books as well, um, you could sequelize it quite easily because there's always going to be, like, the whole point of Sanako is to spread her curse and reproduce, sort of thing, the curse, because she wants to spread her anger out to as many people as she can. And they actually, they, they touch on that in that really new bad American movie, Rings. And that's the thing. Rings did kind of what I wanted this movie to do, but it did it in a really bad way. Right. Obviously. But like that whole idea of the viral video, because the thing's a ring virus. It's called the ring virus. It spreads through videotape. And we're living in an age where there are literally, like I could literally log on to YouTube right fucking now and watch a scary video if I wanted to. Like those one of those like haunted areas. Oh, there's loads of ghosts here. I could watch... How cool would that be if they did that, but in a proper way? Like, you know, it could be, you could make commentary on how we want to be scared by things, or like, you know, we'll watch like any old crap and it can come to back to bite us in the arse. Sadako needs to reproduce by cursing people, so that's a whole element that could be utilized. But I agree with you, the, the later films didn't do that, so it's hard to sequelize a lot of the time because. They kind of, well, some of them did. Like, Sadako 3D deals with, like, a Sadako clone because it's based off the novel uh, S, which deals with a Sadako, like, clone. Yeah, because there's that weird, that weird thing in the book where it's like, if a woman is ovulating when she watches the ring, like the ring tape, she becomes, preg she becomes pregnant with a Sadako. That's sort of right. Thing. I forgot about Cause that. Because that happens, yeah, it happens in um, Spiral, doesn't it? With, yes. Uh, the woman there, uh, with, the, with the high school girl, the yes. college girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, that's a whole element that could be really interesting. It could deal with body horror. It could deal with like supernatural horror. The horror of like the magpie. Uh, not magpie. What's it called? Um, what are those? What are the birds called? Oh, cuckoos. Cuckoos. Like the cuckoo sort of idea of like you thought you were having a baby with your husband, but surprise, it's Sadako. Even if they wanted to use elements from other J horror, they could use like the Tomie, uh, the Tomie, Tomie style thing. You know, you've got like, all these little Sadako girls, like, you know, walking around. Like, they have little Tomie girls, like, right. causing people to kill. Like, how interesting would that be as a movie? Like, you know, you've got, like, an army of Sadakos, essentially, like, walking through the streets of Tokyo. Like, that'd be such a cool sort of movie. <laughs> or just, like, a worldwide apocalypse, like, at the end of Pulse, where, like, it's turned out half the world's basically killing themselves because of these ghosts in the computer sort of thing. Like, there's so many interesting ways you could sequelize the whole, like, mythos of rings by the way it's produced with a video, and just no one does it. No one does it. Does this movie set itself up for a sequel? Uh, n it does in, like, by way of they start showing the video again at the end of the movie after the credits finished. Oh. So, like, they show, like, the well and, like, the shaky sort of VHS and you just see the hair sort of slink out in the hand and it's like, oh yay, Sadako's curse, Sadako's curse is living on, yay. <laughs> I get to watch another mediocre movie in another year or so, good job. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just like, at the end, it's because it happens all the time. It happened at the end of um, Sadako versus Kayako. Like, you know, at the end when like you see her walking through the door and then Kayako just bursts up and does the jump scare oh, yeah. cackle thing at you. Yeah. And then it, it's just like, yeah, it's a very lazy way of saying, like, I'm going to make more movies, the curse never ends, the ride never stops, sort of thing. <laughs> the money train never finishes. It never, <laughs> they never go, let's put this to rest. And I just feel like it's disappointing for me because I feel like now it's turning into a Jason or a Michael Myers or, you know, uh, Freddy Krueger kind yeah. of thing. 
they need to keep the iconography alive. Um, so they just take everything from the old films and don't try anything new. Like, you know, so it gets a bit stagnant. Absolutely. How would you feel if they ever decided to reboot the franchise? This essentially feels like that soft reboot remake deal that's going on at the moment. You know, when they say, we're going to reboot a franchise. Oh, it's going to... You know, like, you know, like, you know, similar things like I did with the thing, oh, gosh. and things like that, where it's like, <clears throat> where it's like, we're gonna reboot the franchise. It's like you always hear the producer saying remake, remake, <laughs> sort of thing. Uh, yeah, it's just like, and I, I don't think he did it out of money. Like you know, I generally think he wanted to make like a decent, creepy product, sort of thing. Because it's been out of his hands for so many years now. I, I've got the um. I've got the theatre book that came with it. Um, oh, that's awesome. Like, yeah, it, it's... It looks really... I can't read any of it. But <laughs> it, um, <laughs> it looks really interesting. It looks like there was a lot of, like, there's an interview with him and he looked like... And the original actress and, like, you know, it's all kind of like... They look like they're all kind of enjoying it. And from what bits I've read a bit of and translated, like, they're all kind of excited about the movie. I mean, I'm not going to say it's shit, are they? But you know what I mean? <laughs> right. It's like, he seems like he genuinely wanted to come back to the franchise, but he didn't do anything with the franchise to make it worthwhile sort of thing. And I just think right now, I think this goes for any sort of horror thing. Uh, obviously, Sadako needs to go to space, obviously, next. <laughs> joking, yes. joking. No, she doesn't. Yes, I, I am, <laughs> be I am all behind though. this. <laughs> that would be interesting, static on his face. <laughs> but, no, jokes aside, I think it needs to go crazy. I think it needs to go worldwide, like literally worldwide. I think it needs to be like a viral video curse now. I think it needs to update with the times um, and bring that, like what Pulse did, bring the spiritual and like um, things like One Missed Call, like bring, and what Ring did, the first Ring did with videotape, bring modern technology in with the supernatural spoopy kind of like Japanese ghost stuff. That's what it needs to start doing. And um, like, imagine like you're doing a live stream and Sadako shows up on your live stream and like thousands and thousands of people are watching it. You just curse thousands and thousands of people. Like that's really creepy. That's a really scary idea. You know, like there's always like that, like I always like watch like, what is it? They've recently like there's been like loads of instances where like on live streams like things have happened like people have been swatted or you know like you hear people like yelling and arguing or like on live news and stuff like that. You've seen like incidents happen live as the camera's still rolling, sort of thing. So you could play around with that motif, sort of thing, like you know that idea, or that idea, that cliche almost of something bad happening live, sort of thing, and it curses more and more people. But because we're kind of obsessed with that whole like of, we're all kind of obsessed now with disaster, aren't we? We're all kind of obsessed with like what the new dumpster fire is going on around the world. And we get it, we get it live streamed to us through like Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, everything, the news, online news, everything. So imagine people think they captured a ghost live on TV, like on a ghost show. Everyone's still seeing that image of Sadako. It's spreading and spreading and spreading and spreading. Next thing you know, half the world is infected with a Sadako ring virus. And like, you know, like it's this apocalyptic free for all sort of thing where people are trying to rid themselves of the curse. And it deals with kind of like the weight of Sadako's curse in a like worldwide new interesting way rather than just focusing on a small group of people trying to save like their brother or their sister or their mum or something like that. See, I completely am for that, and especially because the first book and the second book end on that apocalyptic note, and like you had brought up like with Rings, the American sequel, totally started doing that as well. And it's always like, that seems to be the next logical step, but, you know, probably because of budget or whatever, it never quite goes there, but they like consistently flirt with it. Yeah, I was literally about to say they flirt with it. I was literally about to say exactly <laughs> what you said. They flirt with the idea. I'm like, it's like, you know, like you get blue balls by it. You know, you just say, like, come on, come on, you're going to do it. You're going to do it. You're going to you're gonna go hog wild and just everyone's going to cut. Nah. And then you just reel it back. And you're like, fuck's sake. <laughs> sort of I thought I was going to get an interesting, like, you know, like um, to bring up another movie in comparison, like 
which is totally different but a Japanese property obviously King of the Monsters just came out um, and like that did what the fans wanted it to do I'm guessing in the majority sense like in terms of like a monster movie action movie with all of the elements and like seeing your classic monsters brought back to life in a new and interesting way but with that apocalyptic worldwide sense sort of thing and like the scale, the scale that the original budgets of the movies couldn't contend to like you know they couldn't bring to the table exactly so i think i don't know what they could do with it in terms of j-horror sort of thing but like in terms of what they did with king of the monsters like upping the scale from what we where we started to where we are now because we can rather than going back down the scale and like lessening the impact of the curse exactly to kind of round off my thoughts on sadako if you like the ring the callbacks are kind of fun so it's a six out of ten movie for me it's just above average it does some interest it does some interesting things to start and then it gets a bit dull at, by the end so i mean honestly like if it's on streaming and you don't have to pay for it uh, check it out if it comes on like Netflix in the near future or something like that. I don't know if it will. If it's like, if you're on anything like Shudder, like Shudder, um, yeah, the streaming, yeah. yeah, yeah. If it comes on there, check it out. If it's on streaming and you don't have to pay too much money for it, because it's not worth the money, but it'd be worth like maybe like a night in sort of thing with a couple beers or like you just want to chill out or like chill out and watch something a bit like meh, like you know, like like you could go, oh, that was okay, sort of thing. But beyond that, I would not. I'm not going to be buying the DVD or anything like that if it comes out, even with English subtitles. Because, <laughs> like I said, they said every. <coughs> the only reason I understood everything was because they literally kept repeating the same points over and over again, or like information we already saw. They say it again later. Really? So I was like, I yeah. Sometimes there's a couple moments where I'm like, you literally said this about five minutes ago <laughs> i don't know what you're talking about i mean it was kind of nice right right because you can actually understand it you know but yeah, but still. yeah. <laughs> it's like you can only say something four times in a row before it's like i get it just move on from this ne move on to the next point sort of thing like you know so yeah like i say if you're interested in ring or the ring franchise american or in uh, american or japanese uh check it out on a streaming service if it comes to it but i would not buy the dvd or Go see it again in the theatre if it comes out, or if it's still out. Well, James, thank you very much for that review, man. Like that was that was a lot of fun. No worries, no worries. I'd like to thank James for taking the time to talk to us about this movie, and would like to thank each and every one of you for watching. If you'd like more kaiju and tokusatsu goodness, then for Sadako's sake, subscribe to Monstrosity's Tokusatsu vlog right here on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram.